Today we're excited to bring you a piece of unique yachting history. We're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, aboard Motor Yacht Highline, a 102 foot ocean fast. I'm Justin Neistead with Denison Yachting, and I'd like to welcome you aboard. First commissioned in 1989, her forward thinking and one of a kind design was brought to life by the legendary designer, John Bandenberg. Bandenberg is known for his groundbreaking work on the likes of Oceana, Lady A, and Highlander. Highline falls perfectly in this lineage with her avant-garde design, but it's not just what you see above the waterline that sets her apart. She is propelled by Rolls-Royce jet drives and has a draft of only three feet, eight inches. Combine this with her twin MTU 12V2000s and you have a shallow water boat that pushes this 102 foot hull at an impressive 27 knots. In her day, there was hardly anything like her. While shooting today's walkthrough, more than a handful of passing boats pulled up alongside with a range of questions from, what is this? To, mind if we come aboard? The consensus of every passerby was clear. Highline does not disappoint, and she's impossible to ignore. Now I'm gonna hand it off to my friend Ryan, who's way better at these walkthrough videos than I am. And he's gonna show you every space aboard Highline. Today's walkthrough has us starting on her stern. This is where we get the first glimpse of her creative design. Everything you see back here was meticulously poured over and hand built within very stringent guidelines. Below the aft deck is her tender garage. It's electric and has more than enough space for a tender as well as additional storage for her aft lines and fenders. Hemming guests into the aft deck is stainless that is to the naked eye free from any sign of welding. From the supports to the hand-shaped vents, every small touch on board is custom. Underfoot is a spotless teak deck. There are two sets of salon doors to port and starboard, and in between the doors are vents for the AC. Covering the aft deck is a white bimini that complements her new exterior paint job. Flanking the bimini are a pair of CCTV cameras. Facing aft, we see her aft helm position. Its centerline placement makes it easy to walk highline into virtually any docking situation. On the starboard side of the aft deck are stainless stairs, which provide access to the flybridge and sun deck, which we're going to visit later. Now on the port side, we make our way towards the engine room. Just outside of her watertight engine room door is her shore power connection, with a second set opposite on the starboard side. The engine room is at the foot of the stairs. There are a few things to love about this engine room. The first is the amount of headroom. The second is the amount of space in between the key mechanical components. You have walk around access to her twin MTU 12V2000 engines, as well as space to move around her two generators. On the forward bulkhead are her MTU engine controls. She also has an Aquamizer water maker. Leaving the engine room, we are now going to take a look at her interior, starting with the salon. Our first stop in the salon is the U-shaped day bar all of the way aft. The contrasting blue covering the vertical surfaces of the bar is found throughout the boat and accents the mainly white interior. The bar is equipped with a sink, as well as a fridge with an ice maker. Overhead of the bar is this subtle radial molding and the introduction of this mellowed teal neon lighting. Behind the bar is a TV. Underfoot is an incredibly comfortable carpet with a subtle grid pattern. Forward and to port in the salon is the main interior entertainment space on board. This area features custom leather seating which can accommodate seven adults. With all of the seating facing in, this conversation pit leaves little need for the massive TV found on the forward bulkhead. Here we find an eye-catching storage space for all of the salon's entertainment interfaces. Adjacent to this is a small table with a pair of chairs below the windows. This intimate space with its expansive view would be a great place to start the morning. Forward is the day head. 
Looking out from the day head is a watertight door that accesses the starboard side deck. Forward of the day head, we pass stairs that lead up to the pilot house. We'll revisit this later. As we make our way forward, we pass the stairs that will later take us down to the guest staterooms. Continuing forward is the main dining space on board. Here we see a blue table that features a flush mounted Lazy Susan. Overhead is a skylight. Another great use of space is this dumbwaiter hidden in the half wall. A button can be pressed to raise and lower it between the dining room and the galley below. Across from the table to starboard is dedicated tableware storage. Forward is the on-deck master stateroom. On the forward bulkhead is a centerline queen berth with nightstands and hanging lockers flanking both sides. To port is a dressing station with a mirror hidden in a similar manner to the dumbwaiter found in the dining area. Facing the bed is a recessed TV. The master also features an ensuite, which has a vanity and a shower stall. Easily remove a panel of flooring and there's a treadmill that's been cleverly integrated. When the flooring is in place, you wouldn't know anything was below. Let's make our way back into the hall and take that set of stairs from earlier down into the galley. This galley is everything it ought to be for servicing a 102 foot yacht. It runs the full beam of the boat and is large enough for multiple crew members to work in at the same time. On the starboard side is the laundry station with a secondary sink basin as well as a utility closet which is hard to show on video. Above the counter is the dumbwaiter which directly services the formal dining. Next is a compact doll trash compactor. She also has a GE Profile oven below a GE Profile 5 burner ceramic cooktop. Above is a Samsung microwave. Above the counter on the port side is a triple stainless sink basin. Beyond that is a GE Profile dishwasher under the countertop. Opposite is a side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer which is also GE Profile. Underfoot in the galley and continuing into the crew area is this high gloss hardwood flooring. Passing through the next bulkhead brings us into the crew area. Down here are two crew cabins. Each has twin bunks and their own ensuite heads. Outside of the cabins is a crew fridge. Forward is the crew mess with a large U-shaped dinette as well as a TV. Let's leave the crew area and galley now and make our way to the two guest cabins. These staterooms are accessed from the main hallway aft of the dining space and are on the lower level. These staterooms are identical with one on the port side and one on the starboard side. These each have a pair of side-by-side -side berths as well as mirrored hanging lockers just outside of the ensuites. Let's take the stairs back up and take a look at the pilot house. This helm encapsulates the era in which it was built. It features an atypical seating arrangement that hangs down over the stairs. The footrest even folds up and out of the way. While all of the electronics are hardly the most modern, they do hearken to a time of elegant simplicity. This is seen in these minimal angle and roll indicators as well as these heavy-duty engine throttles. In between the throttles is a recessed compass with her autopilot below. On the starboard side is a fin stabilizer control box with a Garmin GPS display above. Next to that is a B&G Hydra 2 display for depth and speed. To port is a stairwell with side deck access. From here, we're going to continue aft and take a look at the flybridge. Aft on the flybridge into port is U-shaped seating as well as a table with an umbrella. Centerline is a large radar dome and her signature Bannenberg wing. Continuing to the starboard side, we have a large sun pad just before the stair access up from the aft deck. 
The large flat laying pads can be removed to reveal a large hot tub, which we weren't able to fill because of time constraints. Forward of this is a wet bar with a sink and a refrigerator below. Now on the opposite side to port is a grill, which is neatly molded into the superstructure. The walls surrounding it hold in heat on windy days. Center lined and forward is a large bench seat for the captain's companions. On the back side are four speakers on either side of a storage space. Forward of this bench underfoot is a large storage hatch. Our final stop on the flybridge is the upper helm. Here we find electronic and navigation controls that mimic what we saw below in the pilot house. Covering this area is a white bimini with four forward-facing speakers below the radar domes and nav gear. Our final stop on board Highline is the bow. This bow is the most eye-catching feature on this yacht and what gives her such a futuristic look and deceptive length. Her new paint job accents the intentionality of every radius and every angle. Forward is her ground tackle and bow anchor. Three steps up is a large, round sun pad. This molded-in lounging area is really private and deceptively large. Continuing aft is a huge series of sun pads, nearly running the entire width of the superstructure. This would be an ideal place to lay out some blankets and stare at the stars on a chilly evening. Highline was ahead of her time, not only because of her bold interior and exterior elements, but because her design helped propel the future of yacht designs moving forward. She's a timepiece that helped define the look, the nuance, and the speed of the custom yacht revolution. Thank you for joining the Denison team and myself, Justin Eistead, for this tour of Highline. If you'd like to get aboard or receive any more information, please get a hold of me anytime.